right, bro. Let's jump right into this. Okay, what I like to do right away every time I start something new or just start something is I always import in my model, bro. So, I always grab my model. Where the hell is it? Uh, where's my little pop? Oh, there it is. Okay, and then I just drag him to the side. Okay. So, Shift A, obviously, bring up your menu. I'm sure you know a bunch of blenders. I know you've been playing in it, but you want to do a plane. Okay. Plane size does not matter. Make it as big as you want. Uh, this is how I start a lot of my runs. Okay. Make it as big as you want. We'll just go about that for now. Okay. Now the stair part. This is the part... Uh, I've played with a lot of different sizes, man, and I'm going to tell you, this is what Enoch does, this is what like 90% of people do, because every other stair set comes out really steep or crazy if you don't do this. So it's 0.4 length, 0.1 down. So the way you do that is E for extrude, make sure you click this line, this edge, you want to hit here, you know what, let me... Make sure I do that with you real quick. Make sure you go in object mode. Make sure you have edge selected. And then select this edge. Hit E for extrude. You're going to want to hit Y. Because we're going to want to extrude it on this axis. Okay. Now all I do is put 0.4. And then obviously we want the stair to go the other way. So just push next to your zero negative. Or minus key or whatever. <coughs> and that will bring it back out. And then just hit enter. Then you want to hit E again for extrude. Z this time. Because you want to go on the Z axis up and down. And it's 0.1. And then again, negative. Um, you might not always have to do the negative. Like if you do 0.1, it might go down. It depends, I think, which way you're like this. It just, But, you know, if you, 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 you get the picture up or down. So once you have that first stair, you go up here to go into plane mode. Click this plane, shift click this plane so you have both selected. Hit P on the keyboard, uh, and you can see my keys on the bottom left too. Um, and click selection. Um, so now you have that. You're going to hit tab again to come out of edit into object mode. Now you got your stair and this. It seems like it's taking a second, but this goes really fast once you get it. Um, now the stair, you're going to click that. Don't go into edit mode, stay in object mode. You're gonna go over here to this little wrench, blue wrench, to your modifiers. You're gonna go to add modifier and you're gonna go to array. <coughs> now for the factor, there's X, Y, and Z. For this specific stair and for most straight stairs, you're gonna go zero, negative one, negative one. And as you see, it made a second stair. Now you can do the count. So the count, you know, just increases your stair set. Um, you can go with this four and one ratio. You can go as big as you want, and the angle's perfect for any kind of rail. Like, it's just perfect. So that's why the four one. If you do the four two, you'll be, like, right here. And this part of the stair will be all the way down here. So your rail's like a death drop, you know. So it's just, you can play with it, but the four one just works best. Now, something with this... Uh, this isn't finished, this stair. So right now, if I if I was to move on or try to do something with it, it won't let me. See, like, that's the only part of the stair. This is, like, invisible. I can't touch any of it. Um, because I haven't, you have to go over here to this little arrow and go to apply. Or you can hit control A, but I just, I go over here and hit apply. But before you do that, little trick. So say you want to do a kink and a double set, okay? Because like right now you could do, you could easily just apply this, you know, go into it, click this edge, click that, you know, extrude, come out, and boom, you got a stair set in theory, okay? But my little tip is this: before you apply the modifier. Make the stair set you want for the first set. Then you're going to hit Shift D while you have it selected. And then just hit like Y to move it. And then, yeah, move it over 
and you have your other stair set. Now, the reason you didn't apply it is if you applied it, you'd be stuck with whatever set you did. But now, since you didn't apply it, you can take either set and do whatever you want. So, like, you can click this set. You can go, I want to make this a five, six stair. And then I want it to be a flat. And then I want this stair set to be a ten stair, you know? Something like that. Now, another thing that you should always do right away when you start a map is up here next to this little uh, magnet is uh, four dots. <coughs> it's your snapping menu. Go in there and change it to vertex. Uh, the reason for that is when you hit G to move an object, <coughs> you know right now if you move it, it could go anywhere. I know you know that. But if you hold control, I can snap it onto vertices and uh because i have that selected so you kind of need that selected to do stuff properly because now i can just take this <coughs> stair here and i can go into edit mode well i can before i go into edit mode i can take this stair and i can apply that modifier so now the modifier disappears and it's applied to the stair so now if i go in i have a full mesh to play with like a full stair instead of just the top one but I can click this, I can click line, what the hell is this called? Edge select. I can click edge select, and I can click this edge and hit extrude on the Y axis, and I can just bring it out as far as I want it. <coughs> now, obviously, with kinks, you don't want a super long middle, you know, so I just kind of, I kind of eyeball it, you know. If you need to pull your skater over, I've done enough where I can I can get a good, you know, nice set. Now uh, this stair set, obviously, if you try to hit G and connect it, it's gonna be kind of hard because even if you do that, you're nowhere. Oh, actually, that was really close. I'm kind of shocked how close that is. But yeah, it, it's really hard to do it, honestly. So that's why I hit G and then hold Control and I can snap it. The only thing with snapping is if you're like above an object like this and you want to snap it into it, for some reason it doesn't work right. It goes up. So a little trick for that is you just bring, you bring it uh, underneath and then redo it and it'll snap up. I don't, I don't know why Blender hasn't fixed that yet, but it's, just, it's an annoying little thing. But so there, there's your stair set. Hopefully you're still with me. <laughs> now, we're going to take this one step further, bro. I'm going to show you how to put a quick rail on it. You're going to take this bottom set, and you're going to finish it off and apply that modifier, just like the other one. So they're both applied. And on this bottom set, you're going to click this bottom let the bottom part of the stair, hit extrude Y, and that's going to bring your floor out for the, you know, when you land. Okay. Now the tricky part. You want to select, okay, first you want to select your bottom part here, okay, you want to go into edit mode. You want to go to face select, and you want to click this, okay. You want to hit P, selection, back out of object, hitting tab, go back into edit mode. Now you're back at this. What you just did was you separated your floor from your stair. And the reason is we want to do this, these three, one piece, this a different piece, and this a different piece. You could do this different, but it's complicated, and I'm not going to explain all that. But for the rail that we're going to do, you need these three. So now, since I separated this, I'm going to take this stair and shift-click it with this. And now that I have these both shift or sh uh, clicked, I'm going to hit Control-J and join those together. So now those are joined and it's one, you know, one stair. Everything's combined. Now, the easy part, how to make the rail. Now you're gonna have, you have your stair selected, you're gonna hit tab, so you're in edit mode. Um, I'm gonna show you the proper way to do this. Most of the time, you can just click line, you wanna go to edge select, up here, second one. You can do that. I got it all, I got lucky. Sometimes it doesn't work. If it doesn't work, it's easier, like if I try to redo it now, it's, it, 
Oh, wow, it's working perfect. Sometimes it, it clicks these, and it, and it doesn't give you what you want. If it does that, go up here to this little wireframe. Click that, and now it should be easier to get the line you want to get, because you want to make sure you have every, you know, stair. But you just want that. Go back in our regular. When you have that selected, hit Shift D to duplicate it. You see it's duplicated. And then you're going to want to right click once so you unselect and hit P selection. Now you just made this line. Once you hit tab and come out of edit mode, you'll see this line is now on its own. So you just separated the line pretty much. Okay. Now this is the little bit of a tricky part. Follow with me. I'll go slow. You might have to rewind a couple times, but if you learn this, man, it'll make your life so much easier. You, so now that you have just this selected, you separated it, it's by itself, okay? Um, the first thing you want to do well, is hit GZ. Oh, dang, there you go. So wait, while it's lined up still, <laughs> if, you, if you unlined it like I just did, if you had it up here or something, just... Uh, do that vertice, vertice snap um, one of these vertices and it'll bring it back down you know get it back down to the right but anyways once you have it there you're gonna hit G Z point seven and that's about the height that you need for a waist high handrail Why does it look like my guy's floating oh. anyways um so now you have about waist high I did that without telling you. That's why I had to go back over it. But um, so yeah, now your waist high. You can go back up. Go click this. Make sure it's selected. Go hit tab and go back into edit mode. Now once you're in edit mode, hit A, which selects everything. Then you're gonna want to hit up here ver vertex select. And that's gonna change it all to vertex. Now, this bottom first one, not the last one, but the one before the last one. And then you want to hold shift and click. I'm, I'm sorry, shift and control. And then click this one. Uh, oh, I, I missed something. Sorry, no, you don't want to do that. So, yeah, when you, okay, back up a second. When you raise it and you have it done at the level, at 0.7, and you have it raised up and you're good to go, what you're going to do is you're going to tab into edit mode, click vertice select here, so it's on vertices, hit A so they're all selected, and you're going to come up here to mesh, go down to clean up, and then go to merge by distance. Okay, now that got rid of a bunch of vertices that were extra that's what i wasn't doing that was messing me up sorry um so you have to do that first you can't see it but it got rid of some doubles that were there and stuff now you want to click this one right before the last one so you want to leave the last one then hold shift and control and click this one right before the middle okay so right before that middle piece that's going to be your kink part right there and then that's your bottom down there so you want to you want to do those. Then holding shift, you want to click this one, not the not the first one, not this first one, because you want to have the bottom of your kink. You want to click that one, and then you want to click the one before the first one. Once you have, or I'm sorry, you want to shift, control click, the last one, because when you shift click, you can shift click each one. And you know, continue on. But if you shift, if you shift click and then shift control click, it'll pick all the ones in between too. Um, but yeah, so basically, then you're just gonna right click and go to dissolve vertices. Now, this is your kink, pretty much. You can click these. You can hit G, and on the X or the Z, you can mess with them make your rail as steep as you want i like to give the kink a little less kinkness i don't know 
you know, don't raise the beginning too much because uh, it will mess with, you know, you getting onto the rail. You can do what you can go straight edge at the end, you know, you can do whatever you want. Uh, I'll just, you know, do something normal here to show you. Okay, that looks pretty good. So, once you have it set kind of how you want it, you should only have these like four vertices. Depending on the rail, if you have a bunch of supports, you might have a ton, but you're going to want to hit A and then go back up here to Edge Select. You're going to want to hit E for Extrude, Z on the Z axis, and bring it down. Now, what I like to do is give myself some play, so I go to where I want my rail, and then I go a little bit past it, like that. Because I might want to lower my rail or raise it later on. It doesn't matter if it's clipping on the floor through the stair, because all you care about is what you're going to see up here, you know. So, uh, once you have, once you extrude down, this bottom edge is still selected. You want to right click, you want to go to delete delete that and there you go there's, there's your kink now these two supports you want to click one shift click the other one you want to separate them so you want to go P and then selection tab out back in the object click somewhere click the rail part so make sure you don't have the supports it's just the rail now once you have that done you want to hit tab again hit Vertex select, uh, let me see something here. Okay, yeah. So before before you do that, so you separated these now from this. Once you have this separated, you want to hit Control A and go All Transforms. What that does is it pretty much makes this item this scale. Like that's the scale of the item. Now you want to go Tab and click, ver make sure you're in vertex, click this dot, the last one and the first one. The reason we're going to do with the deal with these is because these are sharp points. So if you have a circle that's coming up and then it tries to kink this sharp point, it's going to crush it. It's going to look really bad. So what we have to do is click these two points, click one, shift click the other. Then you want to do control shift B. Okay, now you can let go. Control shift B. Now, when you move your mouse, you'll notice that you're, you're kinking the edges. If you scroll up, you can make them wider. You can go as round as you want. Um, what I like to do is go, oh my gosh. I like to go about that, about six-ish. Kind of hit it like that. I mean, it's all personal preference. It's all design. It's all look. Um, so yeah, there, that's that. So now that you have that like that, you're going to go up here to object. Well, tab out first so you're in object mode. So all you have selected is the rail. If you're not in edit, you're in object mode. Go to object. Go to convert to curve from mesh text. After you do that, you're going to come over here to this little object data properties, which looks like a little green circle thing. You're going to click that. You are going to go into geometry. You're going to come down here. And there's depth and resolution. What I do is your normal basic rail is a .04. That's, that's going to give you a normal handrail. Um, I think it's .03, but nobody makes maps with that anymore. So everybody uses .04. Um, your fatties are .06s. Um, and I think 0 .08 is the fattest I've made a rail, which is pretty fat, pretty chunky. But we'll just do a .04 for demonstration. So now you, you set that. Now for resolution, I like to put it at at least 8. Sometimes I'll go 10, which in this case I'm going to go 10. That's basically the revolutions around it. Uh, you'll see why I do that in a minute. Now you're going to want to click the oh, these guys the supports you're going to want to hit control a and go to all transforms then you're going to want to go to object convert these also to a curve for mesh text go to your depth again it should be in the geometry tab again under 
I'm sorry, object properties and then geometry tab. You're gonna want to change that to. Now this is something I've been doing different. Instead of doing the same size support, I've been doing one less. I just kind of like how it looks when you skate it. I don't know. Call me crazy. That's just me. But you can do .04 and it'll look perfectly aligned with the thing. I mean, I guess I'll do it for your demonstration purpose. But So now it looks weird, but don't forget to put this at 10 re resolutions too. So now what I do is I click those and I click the rail. I hit Control J and that puts my rail together. I right click it, I hit Shade Smooth. Then I go to Object, Convert, and back to a mesh from Curve, Meta, Text, Surf, Text, whatever. Okay, then I come over here to my green object property tab again. Go to Normals, and hit Auto Smooth. Okay, then you can take your rail and you can move it to the middle, do whatever you want with it. It's good to go. It's perfectly shaded, perfectly smooth. Um, you know, ledges are as easy as just making a cube, man. I mean, you can you can do all types of stuff, man. It, I mean, it seems like a lot because you don't know the hotkeys really. Like, I, I don't know if this is helpful. I downloaded it just to show you for this video, but I don't know how hot how hotkeys are like learn but i just learned doing it over and over and without hotkeys it would probably take me as long as it took me to shoot this video and sh I, like i could have made this in a minute less than a minute but because you know obviously i'm shooting a video to show you but um but yeah bro i mean that's pretty much it and then if you get the add-ons bro the skater xl add-on for blender like that auto build video then it's as simple as just going for the grind Click edge select, you pick your edges that are going to grind. And that's it. Legit, just make sure it's not metal. Boom. Now it's grind splinded. I'm good to go. Put it in Unity, let's skate it. See what I'm saying? So it's pretty simple, man, once you get the right proper tools. And I hope this video helps you out a lot. I know it's a lot. I don't know how good I am at shooting tutorials, but... Hopefully it was good enough to where you'll find it useful. It's 22 minutes long, so. Uh, but, alrighty. Later, bro.